Okay, thank you very much, uh, Patrick. So for those of you who've been here um, all day, we've heard uh, in the morning that the Australian um, agriculture sector is doing it tough, but there's good times around the corner. We've heard that the fisheries sector is doing it tough, but perhaps not as tough as it, uh, it seems to be. So I want to give some insights, I think, as to what we see some of the glo um, global challenges in aquaculture um, and some of the local solutions. So uh, the Bill Ludwig, uh, uh, sorry, Senator Ludwig this morning mentioned that uh, in terms of the um, terrestrial animal protein side of Australia's uh, uh, industry, meat and dairy, uh, in terms of food security, it's a very healthy equation. 70% of the meat and dairy uh, we produce, we export to the tune of some $7.5 billion. However, 70% of the seafood that Australians consume is imported. So that's by no means a, a healthy equation. So the question being is over the next decade, is there going to be some change in what we do domestically or globally that might uh, make us more self-sufficient in seafood across that sector and may even be increasing our exports. So, you know, in that context, over the past two or three hundred years, this has become a familiar landscape to Australians, but uh, this has not. Um, so this is a four and a half thousand hectare prawn farm in um, Indonesia, and there are many of these, um, including several that we work with in other parts of the world. So this is part of a reflection that in terms of uh, the seafood that we consume globally and nationally, uh, more and more of it is coming from farming than from fishing. Um, those statistics you've seen in various um, guises in this session, uh, but basically uh, the wild capture fisheries, that's about 90 million tonnes. 30 million tonnes of that uh, is actually uh, not going into directly into human consumption. That's the wild harvest fish meal that gets dried, ground up and uh, fed to fish or poultry or whatever. Uh, clearly not a very sustainable uh, practice. So uh, various projections going forward, uh, but the, the capture fishery sector is flat, if not diminishing, and the projection is the global challenge for aquaculture uh, is to meet that uh, growing demand for seafood by farming. Um, here in Australia, uh, the, it's, a, it's a tiny reflection of the global situation. The sectors are um, increasing. Um, over recent years, the salmon industry uh, most, most, most particularly, um, and, and the others are heading off in, in a reasonable direction, but a very more small scale compared to the global industry. The sector that's not often talked about is the sector that produces the thing that feeds the seafood, and that's the aquafeed industry, which is by far, in terms of tonnage, the largest uh, uh, industry in, in, um, in Australia, aquaculture uh, industry, support industry, if you like. Uh, but note that figure, that's 100,000 tonnes on the left axis. Um, now just look at some of the sectors uh, in uh, the nearest region to us. This is, this is just prawn aquaculture uh, in Asia, 2.6 million tonnes, 84% uh, of the world's 3 million tonnes of farmed uh, prawns. And of course that's mainly happening in countries like China, Thailand and Vietnam. So if you look at the speed of the growth of aquaculture globally, whether it's salmon in Norway or prawns in Asia, it's quite spectacular. So in, in 2000, uh, around about uh, a, a million tonnes, and here we are, you know, 20 years later, so 10 years later, uh, three, three and a half million tonnes. Um, and in this particular graphic, you can see that most of that growth is in Asia, and that's um, occurred with, a, with an introduced species, uh, the white shrimp. Um, that has been at some cost, uh, and uh, that is the rapid, unregulated unreg uh, expansion in Asia. And so, you know, what the relevance is to Australia, of course, uh, um, in, in terms of the environmental issues, need to be also seen in the context of the other key issues. Uh, so, whether that's globally or nationally, the environment, the health, the nutrition and the genetics of the um, farm species are where the challenges lie. So I'm going to just touch on uh, each of those in terms of the uh, global challenges 
and the national response to some of those challenges. And starting off uh, quite topically following on from um, Russ Reichelt's talk, um, the prawn farming and the, the, the coastal environment. You know, most of the prawn farms in Australia happen to be adjacent to the Great Barrier Reef uh, World um, Heritage Area. So that necessarily spawned a great deal of attention on uh, you know, w what are the impacts of this uh, industry uh, growing up uh, adjacent to the Great Barrier Reef. And, and on the back of that, the Australian government uh, and the industry um, put one of the biggest efforts into looking at uh, what those impacts are. Uh, and uh, in a study of over some seven years, 50-odd publications really looking in great depth uh, at uh, what happens to the material that's generated within these farms and what happens to when it's discharged. So I'm going to summarise seven years' research and 50-odd papers by saying that in terms of impacts on the receiving environment, they're relatively transient uh, uh, and on, a, on a relatively small area, uh, but possibly, um, in fact, definitely more importantly, there's an opportunity for these type of systems to recapture those otherwise wasted nutrients and, and treat them prior to discharge to receiving environments. Um, we know that of the receiving environments, tidal creeks are pre-adapted to this sort of uh, material, um, but we also need to consider and are considering uh, very strongly the impacts from the environment uh, on these activities. That farm um, shown here is Sea Farm um, up at Cardwell, which experienced both Yasi uh, and, and Larry. And uh, unlike most of the uh, agricultural uh, industries around it, apart from the loss of power from the generators, uh, were, you know, didn't, didn't miss a beat. So um, a, a couple of points to emphasize here that uh, we also heard about the 10 years of drought preceding uh, the, 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 the rainfall events for La, La Nina. Um, these um, marine aquaculture sectors are drought proof. Um, Australia has episodic uh, shortages of fresh water and overabundances of fresh water, but we've got no lack of um, seawater. So that is something to be taken into consideration where uh, the potential growth of animal protein is in this country.